Hi, everybody. Father Bill Holtzinger, pastor of Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Beaverton, Oregon, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, we are coming up on many things. One is most important, which is Holy Week. Another one I want to talk about is some technology. And, uh, yeah, and just, uh, hmm, something changed here. I'm not sure what it is. I know. I'll start there. What it is. <laughs> I got a haircut. Actually, I got a shave. Actually, I took off my beard. It's, it's spring, people. I'm going to spring out of that and go forward. That typically is what I do during winter is put on the winter coat. People asked me if I had put it on in November because of No Shave November, and that was a coincidence, so the answer is no. So that's, that's, number, that's number three in that list of things. The other one is, uh, interestingly enough, about security. And it's interesting, this past week, Pope Francis was seen in, a, in several photos with a white puffy jacket. Maybe you saw this. If you read about it, the actual story was that that was maybe Pope Francis, but he was not wearing a white puffy jacket. That was done using AI or artificial intelligence. So there is software out there now that can take a photo or video for that matter uh, and change it so that it will appear to be natural in another environment. For example, that, that puffy uh, jacket wasn't actually on the Holy Father. And so this software was able to place it on him, do the lighting and the shading, so it made it look like it was really him. And this is going on. There's actually some really uh, famous videos of somebody impersonating uh, somebody from a Top Gun movie you might know, right? And it's really not him, actually. They've uh, been able to take that character's face, place it on another person's face, and then imitate the gestures so that it appeared to be that particular, uh, well, movie star. I, I, think, I think you might know who that might have been. But it's uh, fascinating because they did a great job. It's, it's very compelling, very persuading. All of these are. In fact, some people, if they're not careful, may be duped into thinking that these are real. Thus begins the issue of security. And actually, security and trust. Can we trust what we see uh, on, in, on the Internet and elsewhere? Uh, another example, you may get uh, emails from people who purport that they are me. Right? That's happened in my previous parish. It's happening here. And it doesn't take long to sniff out that it's not me. If you just look at the email address, you'll see that's not my email address. And if you're not sure, you can always go to our website, call the parish, uh, look for me, talk to me, and I can certainly tell you if that was me. But usually they start very coyly, or that's the word, uh, coy, in the sense that please uh, email me back or text me back. This is a secret. I want to make surprise somebody with a gift. And it usually becomes iTunes cards, Amazon cards, something that they want you to purchase supposedly for me to give to those in need. And what they want you to do then is to then buy these cards, scratch off the little numbers on them, and then give them to them, which they can sell on the black market. You never actually help anybody. It was never me at all. This means we need to be very careful. Uh, be mindful of when you see images. It'll, you'll find this on now. This is a problem possibly coming forward in the news cycles that will have people purporting on like Twitter or Facebook, something happened and it was this person, um, be cautious uh, because they can, that is now easily scammed. An image of somebody is easily uh, made uh, falsified. It could be somebody else and they pa pasted the face of the person on them. And also they can mimic the voice, right? All of this is a scam. But you can, if you're not sure, trust your instinct, then go to that person yourself. Go and find out personally if this is the right person. If, you know, there's ways to figure this stuff out. Just don't buy into what you see on the internet, right? And so the things on Twitter, you might see pictures there, or like I mentioned Facebook. Those can be totally spoofed. They may not be real. But this brings up a big problem, and that is, what can we trust? What can we believe in, right? Well, there's a nice website you can try to help that'll help you out. It's called Snopes.com. I think Snopes.com, S-N-O-P-E-S. And their job, actually, they try to um, debunk false things on the Internet. And this one was quickly debunked by them, saying, in fact, a lot of news media has picked this up and also said it was false. But it brings the case of the discussion about trust. Who do we trust and how can we trust people? Especially when the uh, now the media have to be very, very careful to know whether this video that they've been given is real 
or is it a total scam? Uh, sometimes there'll be things I've seen on YouTube. It's an a attack that a Ukrainian uh, took down a helicopter. And so I go, hmm, that's interesting. And it looks pretty real, but if you look closely, it's actually a scene in a video game. And I hope that people are catching that stuff. So that's really obvious, but there's, there are there advertisements. There, there's link bait, basically, is what they're doing. They're trying to get you to link there. And when you start the video, it starts a commercial. And that then gets money for the person that made the video could be because they get sponsorship, etc. So think about who it is that you, when you click a link, who it is it's going to. And you might even check on some of your web browsers. Before you ever click a link, it can possibly, depending on how you have your browser set up, or even an email, it can tell you what the link goes to. And if that's an unfamiliar uh, link address, probably best to delete it. This is the problem. Sometimes this, and this happened down in Grants Pass, where uh, sadly uh, an individual on the staff clicked an, uh, a link on an email they weren't expecting from UPS. And we get, we get lots of things from UPS. And they thought, well, okay, this, this is unusual, but you know, they're innocent about this. They clicked it. And it ran a pro downloaded program, ran it, and it started to encrypt the entire hard drive of this person's computer, minus a few things they didn't know about. I got an email, or I got a phone call from one of our priests saying, Oh, what do we do? What do we do? I'm like, unplug the computer as soon as you can. They note this though, they were also after there was as it was doing this, a little sign came up on the computer saying, Your computer is being encrypted. If you send this much money, we will decrypt it. Yikes, this is called ransomware, folks. And this has happened to hospitals, libraries, government institutions, schools, I mean, or even churches. And we're small pickings compared to a library or uh, I should say the hospital. Um, and that's tragic if it happens to a hospital because they need all these records, right? Uh, so some people have paid their ransom and they sometimes have gotten their data back. Um, my recommendation to all of us is to always back up our computers somewhere and hopefully two to three places and that will help if you ever stumble into ransomware. Now this is not, I know I'm not talking about anything that's church related but just it did remind me when I saw this image of the Pope we're now getting to a level where scams and spoofing and using artificial intelligence is now able to trick people into seeing things that, and they think that they're real or hearing things or a speech uh, with a voice that is digitized but sounds so real thinking it's really that person. So we really have to be very careful now about what we hear and don't believe just because we see it. Straight, that's, that just breaks our confidence, doesn't it? And so I believe we're going to see a lot more in the news media. They have to double down now on making sure that they stay credible because it's now so simple to um, spoof or to create false information via AI. So what can we trust in? Well, I know this, and I hope you know this too. We can trust in our Lord Jesus. We can trust that he suffered, died, and rose for us. This is what we believe. In fact, this coming weekend, this is, I'm recording this actually on Tuesday. You'll see this on Friday, but this coming weekend is Passion Sunday weekend. We're going to hear the extended text of the passion of our Lord and his death. Passion meaning suffering. And we know this to be the case, that he really did do this. We know this because our faith has told us that he really did die and really rose. He didn't, wasn't resuscitated. Some people propose that he really didn't die. You know, the Romans are really good at this. They were experts at killing people and torturing people. They know when death has occurred. And so Jesus was in the tomb for three days, you know, and rose. And this is where St. Paul reminds us that if Jesus had not risen from the dead, our faith is in vain. Well, Jesus did rise from the dead, and many people saw him. And it has transformed the world, this new this reality. Because now he has conquered death, he's conquered sin, and has now allowed us to participate in that rescue plan of his to live a life free and, and in abundance. Uh, we hear in, in John chapter 10, verse 10, I have come that you may have life and life in the full, or life in abundance. This is what's offered us. And it's not just a life here. We're being given a life in heaven. That's the hope, right? That's where our confidence is. That's where our faith is. We believe, and that's what we're going to celebrate in another week, uh, the Holy Triduum and, and, of course, Easter, Easter Sunday. And I'll get to that in a video next week. But know this. 
We're going to be celebrating the greatest mysteries and the most amazing thing that's ever happened in human history and all of history. And let's invite other people to come. Let's invite people to come with us to Mass this weekend, but especially the next weekend. Maybe even further to Ritalum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil Saturday. If you know somebody who has been away, invite them to come, come home for Easter. Help them to know that it is okay to come. That they can come and they can, and you would go with them. You would either meet them at Mass, you'll even pick them up at Mass, uh, bring them to Mass, uh, and sit with them. Maybe they're a little uncomfortable. Uh, and help them to find a place that will be comfortable for them. If they're concerned about coronavirus, maybe they can sit in the narthex, the entryway with you, or in our day chapel, or there's lots of ways that you can join them in coming to the Mass in a, in a week from now, on Easter. I hope that you can do that. Make a plan. Talk to somebody. Invite somebody that you know. Not a hard sell. We don't want to push people because then they'll be coming skeptical. And we want to build trust because we believe and we know that Jesus did do these things. And he's opened the doors to anyone who accepts him. Think of these things, folks. Spread the news. Come home for Easter. May God bless you. And I'll talk to you again soon. Hope to see you this weekend. Bye-bye.